This week on Zen and Not Zen, Pro Time Edition. They're secured now for other reasons because people are stealing fucking lumber because that shit cost more than yay oh, a couple yeah. years ago. Uh-huh. Crazy, yeah. Not that I know the cost of that shit, but I assume it's pretty fucking Everything's expensive. Everything's expensive right now. <laughs> yeah, Everything's exactly. Expensive. I, I don't yeah, think that crazy. shit went down when my yeah. Cheez-Its are like $6 yeah. a box. Wh- whatever it is, it's more. <laughs> Bro time. Bro time. Um, yeah. Man. Yeah. So this year... 2023. <laughs> uh, this last year was a fucking. Uh, it was quite the year for me. Uh, yeah, no I think shit. they all are. You know, they all are if we look at them. But yeah. um, you know, I was much more present. I think with the. Uh, I don't know. If volatility is the right word, but the uh, fluctuation. How about that? Turbulence. Fluctuation. Vul- mm-hmm. yeah. Vulnerability. Turbulence. Vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of this year, this last year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, pretty intense, and it still is. It's not like that 2022 is over and it's like, well, let's yeah, it's release that shit. Right. You know? no. <laughs> I mean, it's we're only still... three days. in. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Someone added, um, 2020, 2021 and 2022 all together. And the numbers come out to six, six, six. Oh, all right. Fuck. And I was like, that probably sums That's up. That's kind of like that religious lady years. with a can of monster energy drink claiming it's all oh, the signs yeah, of the yeah, devil. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 It was probably yeah, that lady who yeah. did it. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so in numerology, right? So in one six of the ways... Six, six is a good one. Is though, a good number. Yeah. It's actually equals the number nine. Yeah. Right? And uh, three sixes and nines are very... Uh, divin- uh, have uh, divination um, attached to them. Yeah. Uh, there's the famous Jimi Hendrix song, If Six Was Nine. Uh, Nikolai Tesla had the uh, uh, basically dedicated the back part of his life to understanding um, six and nine, yeah, and how they related to the earth and the world and uh, different types of energies that they give off. So, yeah, and uh, in a life cycle for numerology, nine is like the ending of a cycle, so it feels like the last three years were a purge or the end of a cycle which is always going to be what's the rough uh, and turbulent which the yeah. astrological sign looks like that man <laughs> <laughs> which one is it which 69 that's yeah. G- gemini i think thank you yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously yeah. we're not I, look adam, like that, man. Adam, adam just covered up his star scroll he's like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't sell those at mini marts anymore no they don't no you can just get them online now 2022 did feel I won't say worse, but more intense than uh, maybe because I just blacked out in 2020 and 2021. It was just kind of like a spillover of 2020. Yeah. But 2022 felt intense because things started to get back to normal. So there was this added like, I don't know, just intensity. Yeah. So I went to like more concerts like last year than I did in fucking like ever since probably I was like 19 or 20 back okay. when you could kind of just do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of back to what you're saying, that was all real cool, but I still haven't caught fucking COVID. Right. And it's like, I still am not really having you, been, You've dodged it this whole time? Yeah. Even I got it, man. Like, like, and times. with, yeah. with like the idea of like, I'm still not wrapping my head around going around 15,000 people. Yeah. 14 and a half of thousand of them aren't wearing fucking masks. <laughs> right. Like, Screaming and spitting. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's just like, I, I still have a tough time with that. And I did yeah. it like over a dozen times last year. It's crazy. Do yeah. you wear a mask when you go? Uh, so most of the time, no. Yeah. Most of the time, no. Like I'll have one and depending on the show or depending on the vibe, but it's just kind of like... On planes, I, I, I'm not sure anti-mask by any... Stri- yeah, yeah. But, but it's just like, I Close there's there's so many like... You're, you're kind of going to get it if you're going to kind of get it. You know well, what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, it, especially I was at Iron Maiden. I was standing next to the same people for like fucking three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Well, the time that I, where I think I contracted it, I I had just gone out of town, came back, wore mask on the flight at the airport. You know, I was with my grandma, wore, you know, did social distancing, all that shit. And then, oh no, uh, and then I went to a storm game and I was the only one in a mask in Climate Pledge Arena. And then like, and then like a week or two later I got COVID and I was like, I guarantee you got it at that storm game, but I was the only one in a mask. So it doesn't really fuck, like I was following all the rules anyway. And then I still got it. And I was just like, not to be like an anti-masker about it, but like, I, I was just like, I've got my, all my vaccines. I got my booster yeah. and at least my symptoms were like minimal like i had yeah. a really bad headache and i hardly had a cough no yeah. no fever nothing like that 
and I was good for, you know, maybe three to five days, I think I was under Well, the so, weather, like, but... I didn't catch the vid or whatever, but, uh, did catch this year's flu. Which you got that gnarly. Fuck, that, oh, that, that gnarly, gnarly, gnarly that shit. fucked me up. Did yeah. you guys catch that? No. no. Oh, my no, no, no. God, that was so savage. Did you get a flu shot? So I didn't because it was I didn't have proof of insurance and my oh, cheap ass shit. was like oh, it'd be forty five bucks. My like, fuck you, just give me the COVID booster. Yeah, yeah. No flu. So so I caught the flu shot and then gave it to <laughs> gave it to Tiff who was did have proof of insurance at the time. Oh man! But no, that flu was fucked. Yeah, I remember. so fucked man. up. Just seeing death in your eyes. Yeah, I haven't caught the flu. I haven't I haven't gotten a flu shot. And I can't tell you how long, probably 20 years, if not longer. Yeah. yeah. But the, uh, but I, and I usually get the flu like once every 10 years. Yeah. Like seven to 10 years. Yeah, I could, I could remember uh, either. The last time I thought I had the flu was at the start of COVID, is in January of 20, uh, right, you know. And, um, and Mon and I both got just, annihilated just so annihilated and I'm pretty so, sure it was COVID because yeah, it, had, it followed that yet. kind right, of like right, right. energy kind of patterns that COVID does yeah. but um, but yeah every like once every 7 to 10 years I'll get the flu and it yeah. just destroys me it's like my food poisoning yeah. streak like I Ooh. go a long time without food poisoning but when I get it I do it right Ugh. I think you last do right. week, I got oysters, and I got Ooh. food poisoning from Half oysters. shell, huh? Oh, ooh, ooh. Okay, <laughs> oh, right. so check, you'll both red appreciate tie. this. It being, was red tie. Being, being I went to the, straight up went to the hospital because I was oh. like, oh. I went to urgent care because I was like, this is different. Like, this is unlike any food poisoning I've ever had. I've had some oh. bad baba ganoush before. Yeah, baba ganoush. <laughs> 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 That's actually how we, uh, I, that, that was one of Fushi's nicknames. Baba La Fouche. Baba La Fouche. Baba La Fouche. Uh, so Monica works at a restaurant. I won't say which restaurant because this is going to be a disparaging story about sure. that restaurant. And uh, and they were at um, their, uh, let's say, corporate office, sure. right? And they're doing a, um, a shellfish tasting. Mm-hmm. And this is a restaurant known for shellfish. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah. That's all yeah. they do. They have a farm dedicated to this, right? Yeah. And, uh, and so the whole staff from this one restaurant, they have three restaurants. Once the one restaurant was out there at the farm and walking around with the, the farmer, right. The person that's in charge of all this stuff. And they're walking on the beach and they're like, Oh, Hey, here's some oysters here. Have one. And Mon's like, it's midday. There's no tide. This, this isn't good. No. There's no way. And, it's the, been cooking. and they're like, no, Luke here you go. Warm. And they're just like popping them open, giving them to staff. Staff's like, yeah, slurping oysters, all this shit. <sighs> the next day, like 20 people got fucking food poisoning. And did Monica you, didn't eat them. Yeah. And so she's like, she of know. course, what the fuck? Why are you doing that? Like, like, she's like, those need to be like submerged <laughs> in ice. Yeah. <laughs> like, we like, serve fucking, them like at with tags and shit. Oh, like my with God. tags. Like it's a yeah. whole fucking thing. It so, like, reminds yeah, me of that terrible. fucking scene from Drop Dead Gorgeous at the very end where they had the seafood buffet. Okay, have like you the, fucking the, seen uh, that movie? Uh, the Hojo. Have you seen Drop Dead Gorgeous? It See, the way he familiar. nodded, he, it was like if you're on TV was, doing uh-huh. an interview, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, sure. it, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen it's it. It's probably been a minute. I but saw Never Been end, Kissed a couple months ago. Oh, both of those movies don't quite hold up unless you have watched it in the past. They're a little bit problematic, but I still find them both hilarious. Yeah. Um, oh, there was some problems. Yeah, the, yeah. there's a lot of R words in Drop Dead Gorgeous. Uh, a lot yeah, of, yeah, you yeah. know, all that shit from the early 90s. Kind of like, what was that? Kind of like, what was that, Daddy Dearest or whatever that movie was? talking about well shit even ace ventura i mean there's the the, the homophobic scenes towards the end you know yeah it's all that shit but it's 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 worth watching okay okay drop dead gorgeous funny as shit but i've heard blast from the past is really good oh with brendan fraser yeah yeah i love love that movie he's great it's 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 like he's in the bomb shelter times yeah i still haven't i still actually haven't seen all of the mummy i know they made like 55 of them you only need to see the first two First two, yeah. Mummy Returns. Yeah, just Mummy and the Mummy Returns. It's just stop there. That, that's gonna be a 2023 goal. That's there it. They're, bo- they're both on Hulu mu- right now. I was fuck. Well, comfort I can't. I can't, pu- I can't push this up. I've still got to fucking finish it. Stupid Star Wars project in oh, 2022. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Where are you at now? With uh, we, we've stalled a Jedi. <laughs> the last Jedi. Uh, no, Return of the Jedi. Oh, Return of the Jedi. <laughs> on, God like damn six, it. Man. I'm on six. I'm not stalled even, out. It's stalled out. <laughs> That's your 2023 assignment. Uh, so I haven't seen <laughs> Brendan Fraser because he's making a comeback now. Right. Like yeah. it's supposed to the new movie he's got out is supposed to be amazing. Yeah. I don't know what it is, <laughs> yeah, the but whale. the whale, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I started watching on HBO his uh, he's got a series out uh, called The Doom Patrol where oh, it's yeah, kind of like a superhero-esque right, type thing. thing. Yeah. And he's basically plays a robot, so it's just his voice. 
but it's it's amusing. Yeah. It's amusing, you know. And just to hear to hear Brendan Fraser again, I, know. I you know I just always think of like Encino Man and just like you know I grew up. I really Peter enjoyed Rocco. Bedazzled. Bedazzled yes, with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hurley. Hurley. Oh yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. Where she's the uh, devil. Yeah, yeah, totally. That was a fun movie. Uh, he's just so. That's a solid a rom com. I don't think it's enough to do. Yeah. Well, okay, so I want to backtrack real quick. Um, so you were talking about rough past couple years. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was listening to a person talk to, uh, not too long ago, and I can't remember exactly who it was. I'll try to remember while I'm telling the story, but he had this really interesting point. <clears throat> and uh, so not not to speak disparagingly of everybody, of anybody, but just to use these two people as an example because that's the example. Um, so look at the last two presidents we had prior to Biden, right? Mm-hmm. We had Donald Trump, and then we had um, Ob- we had Obama for two terms, right? Yeah. So Obama's very first term he ran on was change, mm-hmm. right? Change. It's all the iconic posters, Achieved. right? Now, one of the hardest things we'll ever do in life is change. Change mm-hmm. sucks. Change is cumbersome. It takes us out of our normality and it makes us do something different and it sucks to create these new patterns and habits and blah, blah, blah. So this person's approach to looking at that was you want to change, you fucking got it. And now this is how weird change is because we're changing the entire structure of humanity, right? We're putting out there exactly what we don't want to tolerate anymore. And people are living up to what they do want to tolerate, you know? And so it's, uh, but it's that change and we're in that change and and it's hard. Right. And so looking at it like that, it's kind of comforting in a way to say like, okay, so we got what we asked for. Now we're in the midst of it. So now we have to weather this storm and we're in the, we're the bringers of the change now. Right. So let's bring in the fucking change we want. Hold true to your values Mm -hmm. don't let the frustrations get the best of you right and that was just like it was it was really inspiring to me to hear that you know because it kind of put things in perspective a little bit totally yeah i feel like the um how bumpy it's been is relevant to how much change is coming in the future so like i feel like even within the past three years, like, look how much has shifted, like, and yeah. how much people, you know, speak to each other or think about things or are more involved with, you know, their own lives and society and others. And, like, a lot of shit has changed already and we're still, you know, in the process of it. But I'm fully prepared to be, you know, I'll take the bumps if it means on the other side of those bumps we get something different. Exactly. Because what, what, what has been working or what we've been doing has not been working for us. Right. At all. Right. And watching videos of, like, you know, supply chain shortages and food shortages. Like, that shit's real now. Like, mm-hmm. we were talking about it in theory a couple of years ago of, like, now eggs are $9 in New York. Right. You know what I mean? Like, shit is <coughs> real life. It's yep. not theory anymore. Well, look at fucking California right now, too. I mean, California's getting hit with some of the weirdest weather that anybody's never look even at seen. Look us! A- atmospheric yeah. rivers? Have you ever yeah. heard of that yeah, term before? Yeah, we get them here. What the here. fuck is yeah. that? Yeah. There's like a river dumping that's, on California every like three days right that's now. That's something I we had, I had started if someone was lived here. I mean, that's in the last five to ten that they yeah. start being like, yeah, this atmospheric river is just going to be sitting here for the next week. Yeah, we don't so usually it's like, get that's it. That's why it's just shitting down rain. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, we usually get it man. like out, uh, you know, outside the city, but like where we, we've had that really big flooding the last couple of years yep. where people like were fully submerged. Like that was due to an atmospheric river. Yeah. But like just our ice storm, our snow that we've gotten. That's, that which ice. We, I, oh, what was your shit like? Because we were ooh. poor. Jeff could not find a place to shit. Like oh, the, poor the kid Jeff. can't even walk on hardwood floors or tile, and so to take him Damn. outside and have a complete sheet, oh, like shit. an ice rink, watching this thirteen-year-old dog try to take a shit was painful. And then I couldn't pick him up because I couldn't get any traction either. So the dogs had a hard time. That was insane, though. Yeah, it was. Like, uh, that was truly insane. They're, they're like the videos of uh, parked cars oh, just I rolling. Know, like right? just parked cars. Yeah. Not getting hit. Just parked cars like, oh. Yep. And just it's, sliding down the hills. It's We're not built for snow, but we're no. really not built for ice. No, ice like, no, no. We are Savage. not built for it as a city. Nope. But like all this, all this I, was, I was all over Reddit, just these ring cameras and people just like, front of their just driveway just their parked car doing just fine yeah. some guys just like oh i can make it mm-hmm. it's like oh you just hit like he brought down a row of cars yep. into an intersection well we didn't stock up on food because we're stupid because we were like oh snow's over we'll we'll put in a you know amazon fresh order or whatever and of course it was the day of the, the ice storm that we got so i was like <laughs> let me just walk down the corner store it's open i call them they're open i was just like it can't be that bad it's you know less than 
800 feet. I can make it down. Yeah. And then I stepped outside and I was fully going to be one of those people who just were, I was fully prepared to just crawl my way there and back. (laughs) Cause I was like, I'm already too far gone. Like I'm already halfway there. I can't turn back. And thank God, one of the roads, if uh, like so, our neighborhood road, um, if you can get past that, like and get to the main road on Denny, that was still treated for the snow from the couple days before, yeah. so that didn't have ice on it. Yeah. So I was trying to be an like an asshole. I was walking on the sidewalk, and then I just see this mass of people walking in the middle of the street because there's no cars out, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm just <coughs> going to walk in the middle of the street. And it was, I do enjoy those apocalyptic mayhem moments of like. Either yeah, uh, your after shotgun holidays, over your shoulders. You walk down the middle like, of like rules. <laughs> like no one is abiding by any rules. It's yeah. fully survival mode. Uh-huh. Like just people walking straight up in the middle of the street. And I yeah. feel like we're all together in this moment. Yeah, just Gosh. trying to survive. Yeah, so I went to the grocery store the day before because so I, we got the ice storm on the twenty third. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the twenty third, the entire city ground to a halt. Yeah. So I went to the grocery store the day before just because I'm like oh, I don't want to go on fucking Christmas Eve and we'll just go to the you right. know and it was and I didn't even really think about this because they were talking about this on the news which I do occasionally watch and I'm like all right whatever but <laughs> the fucking grocery store was absolutely insane <laughs> on the twenty second like. People in my neighborhood apparently took the. I mean, it was also Christmas timing, but right, like yeah. it was insane. Mm. So we get the ice storm on the 23rd. On the 24th, so now it's Christmas Eve because everybody missed that day of like pre shopping yeah. oh, yeah. or whatever. That fucking place looked like it was like free crack giveaway. Yes. <laughs> like fucking free tickets to Montel those Jordan. Poor it was insane. Man. Oh, I felt those so fucking so, bad. Those poor felt employees. so fucking bad. And that's like, it was a central market, so it wasn't like mm. Safeway where they. In theory, just I, I can't speak. This is based on experience. Safeway's like, okay, it's one store, one employee. Right. <laughs> so, yes. you know, like, yes. it's based on what I've one seen. Store, <laughs> yeah. You got this, John. <laughs> you got this, John. <laughs> exactly. The guy, like, prints off the fucking thing, puts the name tag I don't know, sir, over, that seems like a lot over of somebody else's name. He's like, you got this, John. <laughs> So was your bodega not like that? That's what yeah, it was. Was it, was it insane? Was uh, there like no? Okay, there were a couple people there. There was one. I think the, the bodega that I usually go to, they live above it, so I knew they'd be mm-hmm. open because they don't have to like drive in. Um, and it's like right down the street from us, and they are always fucking open. And uh, there were a couple people in there, but most it was mostly just dead. Everybody, because I was living on Capitol Hill, yeah, which are hills everywhere. So even mm-hmm. to get, I was driving on Capitol Hill like, today, and I'm Jesus. just like, I fucking oh, uh, how did and I live <laughs> right on like I'm I I got a hill on both sides on Belmont and Thomas. Um, shout out if anyone wants to come visit. Um, uh, but yeah, if I can like just make it to Denny, I'm usually good with like snow days or whatever, but my car is like, it, my car is fucked. Were like, you here for that? Yeah. Were you guys here? What was that like over here? I was fucking bad. Man. I'm sure Wild. everyone was bad. driving. Everyone was probably driving I, on the no east idea. side. I didn't, I, I didn't go out. I was supposed, like I, I, I had a sound bath schedule. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I meant to ask you about that. Yeah. Well, no, that was, uh, the, so that the was solstice. the solstice. That was beautiful. Oh, I'm so <clears> Um, yeah, it was really magical. It was cool. Oh. Sorry, you missed nah, it too. That's all right. That's um, what happens. But uh, but no, I had a private sound bath scheduled in Columbia City, and I uh, Monica had uh, so already before we knew of the, the ice storm, Monica had a plan to do something in a part of town where she needed the the Kia, uh, the Subaru, right? And so I was having to drive the Kia, which is rear wheel drive to to. Oh, to that's a rear wheel drive. Right. And so, like, I it was already nervous because I was like, "Ah, shit! There's no way I'm going to around with that thing." Why would that car be rear wheel? I have no idea, dude. But uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a Korean car. Yeah. Like, I but don't it's know. Like it's like a Kia just, Sedona or something like that. Optima. It's, it's not Optima. Optima. Two thousand four, baby. Yeah. 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 It's a Original good year. hubcaps. It's a, good, yeah. it's a good year. <laughs> good year for the Optima was hoped but, uh, for. But yeah, so. Uh, yeah, you know, so yeah, I was already dicey. Like I didn't sleep well that night, and mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I never not sleep well. Like I've gotten over the, like the nervous jitters for some yeah. like new thing, but like for some reason I was just wasn't feeling it. And I got up the next morning and saw all the ice, and I called my client, and she was like, "Yeah, no, you're not coming here. We're all canceling." No way. So and Mod got canceled, so we just had a home day. I didn't do shit. We stayed here, and we got just everything here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Tiff got called off of work like about an hour or two before me, but okay. I was still going to venture up. My driveway was a fucking sheet. Oh, it was yeah. Yeah. It's already kind of sketchy in that back end on your Yeah, yeah. My, it wasn't my, even <coughs> sloshy ice. It was a solid sheet of ice. Sheet of, even the like, grass. Like, I was like, was okay, insane. let's just make it to the grass. Right. And then I put crazy. Jeff on the grass and it's just bumpy. It's, it's worse on the grass because it's fucking bumpy. It was fucking nuts. It was just insane. Just an absolute sheet of 
advice. I actually uh, bought like probably four months ago those fucking like things you put on your shoes. Like, oh yeah, oh the ice packs. So I'm good. getting them now. So good. Yeah. Like, the way so good. Just threw those over my been. fucking vans. Boom. There you go. Yeah. I'm getting no, those. but I mean, just a sheet of ice. See, mm-hmm. like the other thing, it was like it was cold, but it wasn't fucking like snow. It wasn't like damp. I had a just friend a of mine sheet of ice. Yeah. who was a, a like a mountain like a real life mountaineer and they were wearing their like ice tracking like like, like the mountain, the mountain yeah, exactly. ice fucking like the statues. shit that like Stallone killed a guy like with exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly well then okay. Okay. So appreciated then, Stallone movie on so then on the 24th when we finally got out and about right so oh, I, had my, yeah. I had my sound bath and I leave and goddamn dude I, there were so many fucking potholes I don't know about y'all, oh, but like, there's yeah. so, and not yeah. like little ones. Yeah. These are like yeah. conquers, car bro. shakers. Yeah, yeah. man. Hitting, dude. Drop the Holy bottom out of your Kia. Yeah, yeah. totally, man. <laughs> All my sound gear starts going all fucking jingly <laughs> yeah. jingly. Yeah. like a wandering minstrel. Did you keep the hubcaps? I probably caps? lost a hubcap. <laughs> you know, fucking hell, man. But yeah, fucking, that's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, Kirkland, nuts. they already got him filled up. You know, Kirkland, man. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Kirkland. You know, you do some things. Shore, right. Shoreline, yeah, Shoreline, right. like, got a bunch, like, taken care of. And I think, like, a good portion of them are, like, trash again. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. of because of that. That was insane. Yeah, that's crazy. What about travel? Where'd you guys go this last year? Oh, shit. I, I went need to... to think about that. I was fully in grandma mode this year, apparently. So I, I just Tucson with grandma recently. Yep. And then San Diego with grandma. And I, oh, and then Nashville. Yep, so really, yeah, all the yeah. Usually, it's just a visit. I haven't done like a vacate, like a fun vacation since before COVID. I think. Yeah. 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 It's just been for like family members. Old. old yeah, I pretty much stayed visits. local. I did that trip down to LA for one night for that canceled Loggins and Machina show. God damn. <laughs> Wait, didn't you didn't you go somewhere for the uh, the Minute Work show? Or was that last year? That was that was two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. I appreciate that. That's good to yeah, yeah. keep putting that. That's fucking one of my proudest life. We'll moments. never let like you if forget we're, if it. We're gonna, no, I got no problem with that. No, my point is if I'm going to put that in like the quarterly best of of yeah, Robin right, for yeah, his yeah. 30s. What about Rusted Root? Would you go travel for I Rusted Root? I wouldn't travel for yeah. Rusted Root. God. Fuck. What Save about Rusted Root? I'm fucking looking to... Yeah, what about Rusted Root? Yeah, maybe we should guess fucking other bands yeah. we find embarrassing that we think Robin might travel to. What about Rusted That'd be a good show. Yeah, that would I'd be good. Listen to that. So, yeah, I'd listen to that. <laughs> what about Rusted Root? Oh, those shit. guys are from fucking like Pittsburgh. Are they really? Yeah. So like, I grew up thinking those guys were you know kind of like you they know like they're all Australia white and shit. European so I should have been able to put this one together. But I, I put up with them in the same categories like Lady Smith, Black Mombazo, and shit. And then it's just like <laughs> not quite the same. No, nope, not really. Not at all. Nope. Oh, nope. Nope. Hell. Very much bunch of white people from Pennsylvania. <laughs> I think they're from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah. Steel That's like City, Dutch. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're royalty over there in yeah. Celeste Town. <laughs> what uh, is uh, what's a lesson that 2022 taught you? Oh, huh. well, get, probably get a it. flu shot. But I mean, yeah. But like, I see. I usually, I've seen. I've actually, the, I think the last time I got the flu shot, like I've gotten a, a decent amount. Like I'd say. Out of 38 years, I'd say probably 20, 20 to 25 of those years I've gotten a flu shot, especially yeah. as a kid. Yeah. But the only one of, as an adult, I think I remember the last time I got one, I actually got the fucking flu that year. But right. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not anti vascular I'm just going to be like, yeah. oh, i got to cancel Zen and not Zen. Um, Robin's yeah. fucking Joe Rogan. <laughs> got wide reach. Neil Young's going to get pissed off at us too. For the- well, I mean, that's part of the flu vaccine is they give you the flu. Yeah, exactly. And it's then like, your yeah. antibodies are like, oh, no, shit. Yeah, let's, no, that's why they're like, hey, you feeling okay when you get this? They're like, oh, you're like, you can't have this. Yeah. like, uh, yeah, because yeah. we're going to make you sick probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but just mild sick. Yep. Well, no, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I really learned much this year. I mean, I'm sure I probably did, but I mean, yeah. what's jumping out? Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys are probably going to hit me with some fucking... Humili- oh, well, humili- we're sitting on bars. <laughs> yeah. Sitting on just fucking bars. Right bars. Just bar- bombs. Pulls out fucking a mead composition book. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with January's no, lessons. I'm, I'm a trapper keeper. Right? <laughs> trapper. Yeah. I fucking, Velcro. I bought trapper keepers last year. Oh, good idea. Yeah. I didn't know they still made those. They came back, came back in a big way. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I we guess I guess there's a lot of people just reliving their childhood, so it's like we can make money off this. Why yeah. not? Fuck yeah, man! Yeah, trap the trapper keeper. keeper in there, man. If I ever go back to school, that's what I'm using. Do they still sell those uh, those pencil boxes, the ones with the bumps on the top? 
Um, oh shit! They're like one, the lid is one color and the bottom is another color. Oh, I know exactly what you're Starts talking. Starts with an S. It's like Skechers, but not. I know exactly what you're, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, used to rattle around in your backpack. So I was actually I, I go to Goodwills probably probably at least once a month i'll go hit up a goodwill mm-hmm. yep. check some shit out but the lady needed like a box for like crafts and we totally found a fucking caboodle for like yes. two bucks oh like, yeah yes. man like i don't even care how broken it is <laughs> we're gonna buy it, it. <laughs> fuck yeah man i can always find a good fucking little storage actually yesterday mom and i went to goodwill to try to find the storage thing we couldn't find shit but we looked at like rugs and stuff and like man i opened one of those rugs up and as soon as i opened it up i got hit with like Ooh. whatever that dust was in there and, like, oh. and I'm just like not, just, don't breathe no. don't breathe oh, oh god oh god like, orifices orifices <laughs> all in my face god all damn. in my face yeah it was bad yeah uh, so yeah okay so I think so this year was hard don't do that that's a good lesson don't uh, open yeah. rugs at Goodwill don't good open well. rugs at Goodwill yeah you can just really kind of yeah, be, be cautious wear your mask for that yeah. um, so this year has been hard uh, for lessons, uh, but in a good way, uh, you know, like, so we've talked about my mom passing quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and that was a lesson that I learned that I was more prepared than I had been in the past for losing somebody that close to me. Um, so that was, uh, you know, one of the beautiful lessons that we never want to learn, but there it is. Um, so that was, <clears throat> really comforting to know that there was that strength and also support like you guys, right? You guys yeah. keep checking in with me and, and all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, so know that I'm there for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, so that's been another really good lesson to learn is that you, you, sometimes we forget how supported we are, yeah. you know, and how, uh, how much that support is unwavering. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we talked about being a burden a couple you know months ago. Yeah. And, and that's one of those things where like, I never want to be a burden on somebody, but in those moments, you realize how much of a burden you'll never be because yeah. there's that much love. Well, yeah. I remember when, I mean, you know, not to say you've kind of moved through this or whatever thing, but you were just like, I was like, how's everyone doing? It's like everyone's kind of doing their roles. And that's not yeah. meant to just yeah. their way, but it's just like, yeah, it kind of seems like everyone's doing it. Yeah. Like I checked in on you in my own way, you right. know, like it's, yeah. it's. By not checking in on yeah. you, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, thinking, it's, it's, thinking nice thoughts about you. Yeah, but you know, it's it's it, you know that's it's it's good to you know it sucks that you've had to learn those lessons, but it's glad that you've kind of got the stripes and I guess to. Do well, it. we're all gonna have to at some point. No you shit. know what I mean? Like no shit. it's just yeah. Yeah, that's you know something uh, my buddy Tang taught me a while back was. Um, we're we're all going to experience some kind of trauma in life, mm-hmm. whether it's loss or traumatic experience for ourselves, whatever emotions, everything, and um, and so in those moments is when we need our peaceful practices, yeah. and that's that's your definition. Fill in the blank. Your peaceful right. practices. Mine are yoga, meditation, sitting with plant medicines, you know, mm-hmm. contemplation, shit like that, and um, and so you can definitely build those things when you need them. But it's fucking hard because you can barely even you see get straight that things. Yeah. For someone like me, if it is not in place before right. it happens, yeah, no. it is not happening. It's, right. you know, it's I mean, too late for me at that yeah. point. You've been putting it, you were putting in work before all this. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you kind of made the bed that you got into. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it just so happened to have military corners. <laughs> <laughs> Hospital corners, yep. military corners. So that's, you know, so that's, I think my biggest piece of advice for that is, you know, build your practices when you have the time and the breath too, because when you need them, you fucking need them. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Um, So that's been a really, you know, good thing for me to understand because this year has also been really hard for my Mm. self-esteem. You know, I've been doing a lot of work um, uncovering the, the, the stories that I've been telling myself Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a very frustrating process to, to, one, realize that you've been living in your own falsities and you're limiting your own self because of the stories you tell yourself. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. a strong thing to understand about yourself. Yeah. Nobody um, sees you the way you exactly, see you. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But the, I think the hardest thing for me is still living them knowing they're there. Yeah. It's like, I know that's a story of falsity and scarcity and that, that's not true, but I still fall into that role constantly. Yeah. And then I notice myself there and I'm like, get out, you yeah. can do it. And I'm like, but I'm already here. I've already stepped into this role. So now I just have to play it out. Yeah. And it's just so fucking frustrating. Yeah. I was, um, I feel like I have been going through a similar thing where it's like, I'm acknowledging that what is happening to me right now is an old story. I keep telling myself 
but it feels so real Mm -hmm. and I've done it for so long that I, I, all I can do at this point is acknowledge it's happening, but I don't always know how to like shift it because for 35 years I've been doing the same things over and over and over again. And this has been my very physical reality for a long time. So anything else just feels like not like this is, this is the reality of my situation and it's always been this way and it will always work out this way and it will always feel this way. And because I don't have another example of it feeling differently, it's hard for me to shift into that, that frame of mind. So I, I totally Mm -hmm. understand that. Yeah. And in the way that our brain works in that pattern making way, even though we don't want to be in that place. Mm-hmm. There's comfort because we already know how we're going to act in that space. Yeah. So the discomfort comes from changing it. Mm-hmm. But you know, to where, to your point, to where you're at and where I keep trying to tell myself, cause this is the advice I always give people is that whenever we change habits and there's a book called habits on that bookshelf back there, it's a fantastic book, but it talks about how we change habits and there's a process. Like we can't just like, I mean, we can sometimes, sometimes cold Turkey works. We can just see something and we're done. Right. Yeah. But a lot of times we can't mm-hmm. and the, there's a process to it and it's understanding the thing you want to change, catching yourself while you're doing the thing you want to change, understanding that that's going to happen soon, but you can't catch it yet. Right. Yeah. So we're still in the process of understanding like, okay, so I just reacted like a four year old when mm-hmm. Monica yelled at me. Right. And I saw my feet and yelled. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now I'm catching myself and I'm in that role. I'm like, Oh God damn it. Why am I still here? And that's where I'm at. And it totally sounds like same. you, yep. but now we're, you know, we progress and it takes time because like you said, 35 years, yep. 42 for me, it's mm-hmm. a long fucking time. That mm-hmm. ne- that record needles fucking deep in my groove right now. And it was set there for a reason. Exactly. Like it was a survival mode or something at some point. Yeah. And so it served a purpose. It feels like the only option. Right. And I know it's not, but it's like, I can't find the feeling of another option. Right. And I was even trying to do that this morning of like, cause I, I struggle a lot with shortage consciousness cause that was very prevalent in my family and you know, both parents and growing up with it. So you have these like things in your brain of like, you know, it's, you're never going to have enough money. You're never going to have enough this and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And so I, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so I have never really had enough money. And then just kind of laying in bed this morning thinking, I was like, okay, what would it feel like if I had this much in my bank account today? And I, the struggle I had to try to find what that would even feel like, I can't get there. And so it's like tricking your brain into thinking like, yeah, it's not there now, but like if I can find that feeling of what it would feel like of that relief or of that security of like, even for this moment while I'm sitting here and I can't even find it. It's like, ah, there's, there's some work I need to put in. Right. And that's, you know, one of the things that I've found really helpful with plant medicines, Mm -hmm. you know, the psilocybin journeys, things like that Mm -hmm. is that it gives us that escape from those stories and can show us how, beautiful it can really be right and where we can really kind of open ourselves up and that's been kind of with that whole plant medicine movement is kind of that especially actually with treating alcoholism with using mushrooms to do that but it's just interesting illness in general you know i mean you and i i mean i've got three years of no booze now you've got over that which is also pretty badass but it's just like i remember years two three years ago i had friends ask me like you know why why did you drink you know, and obviously it gets habitual after a point. Sure. And I didn't really ever really think about that on a just basis. And I had the answer, well, there was how I view myself and how other people view me. And it's probably closing that gap. Mm. Right. You know, and it's in wherever the fuck that gap is, you know, like b- both positive or negative. No. Right. Yeah. Totally. You know, a fluctuating scale. And then the, towards the end is I'm fucking really in a rough spot of it before I dried out. It was just like. Okay, well, now I'm kind of associated as this way, regardless whether I want to or not. And it's right. like, okay, well, I'll just own that now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's fuck, man. <laughs> but it's just like self perception and like how you view yourself is just like. It, well, and I don't think there's anything scarier than, than trying to be your f- full self in every space. Because I am, a, I am in the chameleon in that way as well where yeah. i'm very aware of how people are perceiving me or yeah. how i think they're perceiving yeah, me. yeah yeah and so i will mold myself to whatever energy that you yeah, are in like uh, i will mirror what you are giving me yeah. because i don't want to upset you audience. i don't yeah. exactly yeah i can do that so too. I, yeah i could do it very well and i think you know alcohol was not my uh you know addiction of choice yeah. but i have other things yeah. that, in my life that i use yeah for those types of things so i totally resonate yeah. with that but just like 
what if like that the scary tight chest feeling of like because I was talking to Mandy about this the other day where she she is probably the only person in my life right now where I feel like I don't need a break from because mm. and it and it's not like you know it's a testament to her she's great and all that blah 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 but it's more of like <laughs> yeah. I feel like I can be any version of myself around her without yeah. any kind of consequence yeah so I can be a bitch I can be neurotic the, I can be, be anxious. show the vulnerability exactly yeah, and right. there and it's that unconditional I know I'm getting unconditional love back no matter what mood yeah. I'm in yeah. but I don't trust myself to be that version I am with her with most other people right, because there. I'm afraid of scaring them off for, you know, or whatever reason, like upsetting them or, you know, boring them or annoying them, um, you know, sounding dumb. Uh, and, and I think that there's just nothing scarier for me anyway than being my authentic self in front of other people. Yep. I can resonate with that. Yeah. Most no. definitely. But yeah, but especially with the drinking, like, well, it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to sit here and also sit here and beat my chest and claim any kind of, I've done some growth here, but it's definitely still got some ways to go and I still medicate, you know, I just choose to do a much healthier way. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, it is kind of, you know, just when you guys are talking about this whole idea of how you perceive yourself and the stories we tell and how powerful and how really dis like fucking disabling they can be. Mm -hmm. I mean... I guess, I mean, this is just a lesson I've kind of, I've been fortunate enough in the last, you know, really my entire life, but really in the last 15 years to have a lot of close friends. So like I've had that outlet, yeah. had you two for quite a while. Uh, I'm definitely more on the regular because of something like this, but also just like, you know, to have people to talk to that can challenge that shit. So it's, yeah. so it's not just, you know, at the time, especially at the peak of my drinking, I, like, you know, for me, 2022, 20, the lady moved in. So that's a huge fucking deal, especially for me. Cause I've lived alone for yeah, it's been a 12 bit. years, yeah, yeah. 13 years. It's a long time. So there's a little adjustment there for me and whatnot, but like the living alone and going through all this by myself, quote unquote, despite, you know, people reaching out, like there's, there was nothing there. Yeah. to really fucking challenge any of that. Right. Yeah. It didn't have the Mandy, as it were, to fucking, like, kind of shell that shit out. And it's just fucking how important those relationships are. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. I feel that. Mm. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah and, and I think I'm more aware of when I'm doing something, when someone, like, I can see a facial reaction or yeah. I can see as, like, oh, that came out a certain way. Or I am behaving, like, I'm not picking up on how I'm behaving, but I can see it's affecting her in this right. way. And so if I didn't have that, like you said, like, I think it would have taken me maybe a little bit longer, but, um, well, yeah. that's, uh, that's one of the issues we have right now with the way we communicate mm -hmm. is that we don't see the facial expressions of people when we deliver the messages <laughs> yeah. and we don't have that empathy when we say, Hey, you fucking suck. Yeah. Send. Right? right. And then that person's like, Oh fucking hell. Yeah. Right. And then we have all the time in the world to craft another message and send that back. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no real time conversation. There's no looking at people's facial expressions to realize like, Oh shit, I just made that person feel like shit. And I, I don't want to make that person feel like shit. Cause that makes me feel like shit. All right. So yeah, I think there's a disconnect with that as well. Yeah. Like seeing the facial expressions. You totally. know, it's kind of more a testament to me in that my losing battle against text messaging and still relying <laughs> on talking on the fucking phone. <laughs> but granted, I find myself now like getting annoyed when I have to be on the phone for more than like a minute or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm tapped out at still, 10. Still, still yeah. value. Well, no, but see, I'll also enter, enter things, and this is why I know some of my conversation will get screens because of my, quote, importance on relationships that I try to is that I will continue to maintain phone calls with people that I haven't spoken to in probably two, three months where it's like, no, let's keep this going. But like those get screen is like, no, we, I don't have time to answer that right now. Yeah. Yeah. But... So like, and that's respectfully how it's usually responded to in text messages, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Yeah. but totally. that's kind of the whole thing. But it's just like you, it text messaging eliminates really any kind of tone. Yes. <laughs> like, and so, so you can even send for a guy something who lives innocuous. With sarcasm is fucked up. Exactly. Yeah, right. There have yeah. been yeah, like there's just so many times where just depending on whatever mood I'm in or what's happened, like you can send something innocuous and read it eight different ways. And then I, you know, you're crafting your response based on well, if you said yeah, was it okay it or was it uh, was right. it oh, okay yeah. or okay was it. There's, okay. a good, there's a good Key and Peele sketch about that. Yeah, where yes. they, like lose their mind on uh -huh. each other. Like he's like, yeah, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Exactly. That's fine. That's exactly yeah. what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Get it. Oh man. 
But back to plant medicines real quick, because uh, we brought up alcoholism right after that, which, yeah. you know, uh, so early on in the development of uh, AA, Bill W. was experimenting with LSD for uh, treatments, treatment uh, um types for uh, alcoholism and that was back in i think the 30s or 40s i guess 40s <clears throat> and then but then you know lsd got outlawed blah 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 and then he had to backtrack but originally that was a big part of the development of Al- alcoholics anonymous was lsd as that moment of seeing god having your understanding of life your reason to be there whatever that case is but it's that 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 click of something that where you realize there's something out there bigger than you and that what you're doing to yourself is harming way more people than you think, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, but yeah, with that, I mean, there's so many cool fucking uh, uh, like ibogaine, right? Ibogaine is a great um, ayahuasca type medicine that they serve in Mexico right now that helps with um, uh, opioid addictions. Oh yeah, and uh, and also now they're using it in combination with um, with uh, DMT, five uh, meo DMT for extreme PTSD mm-hmm. with um, uh, war vets. Yeah. Lots of cool shit. I know that's uh, that's a goal of mine in twenty twenty three is to make time to have an actual like s- sit down plant medicine time for myself because yeah. like I I I want to plan out a time where I'm not going to be deserved or deserved <laughs> Freudian slip uh, disturbed yeah um or have to do anything or walk the dogs or mm-hmm. or whatever and so like a retreat or something like that I want to do that yeah yeah. That's actually a part of my um, business that's been growing recently. Yes. Is plant you medicine journeys. Do those. Did yeah. you did you hear about the uh, shroom house down in Portland? Mm-mm. Oh. Okay, so the shrooms are I think de facto legal down there now. Yeah, they're decriminalized. Yeah. yeah, like okay, same so up here. There there was a place that literally was called the shroom house. They just opened this up in downtown Portland and uh, just sold mushrooms as if it was like a weed shop. Okay. Not legal as per Washington or Oregon law. How yeah. long did they go so for? So they did it for like two weeks. We're talking like a line out the block. I was just going to say, how just, much could they it, get in well, two no, weeks? No, no, but it's just like, in my mind, it's just like, is that the state of policing? Like with what we're talking about right. here, it's just like, okay. Like I, my, I knew a buddy who was like, yeah, I heard about it. I got in line. And he's like, I'm like, well, what about for your work? He's like, oh, I was doing this for photos yeah. and shit. Yeah. It's just like, cause the press was there. Right. Yeah. Like everyone's like fucking, oh, here we are. Like line out the block selling mushrooms for two weeks straight. It's like got shut down. It's illegal. It's like, how does anyone get arrested anymore? Yes. That's like the, well, I think they're selling. Yeah. It's like insane to me that you People can outlaw out something that exists on the earth. That we can grow. That you can grow. I can find that. And right. be like, no, you can't have that. Right. That's illegal to have. Yeah. It's in the forest, though. I'm just going to, yeah. It's, yeah. It's just. I've, I've never been a mycologist enough. Is it mycology? Yeah. Mycology. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Yeah. To ever go picking and trust that those are going to make me trip. Yeah. And not just oh, like trip. Oh, can't I just. Fuck it you don't want to fuck around. Yeah. 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 Like the book will be like, it could also kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, totally. well, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I think I've shared these stories before, but we went mushroom picking a few times down in yeah. Texas and, um, we stopped because we got shot at. We're mm-hmm. in cow fields in Texas. Cow yeah. manure. And, yeah. 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 So all of a sudden, like we're out there, we're quiet, you know, but yeah. we're also children, you know, 18, 17 at the time, whatever. And uh, the army crawling through and like looking at things, having our little flashlights out and all this shit. And then we hear, and like, no! and just like everybody hits and you just hear, I don't know where he shot or who shot, whatever. And then, yeah, we just, just army crawled our asses Texas, out of there. Man. Yeah. Texas. God, <laughs> God bless it. So I had a, I had an old boss who told me that, uh, this back in high school told me that like new construction sites, like the fertilizers they do when they put down lawns and okay. shit. Yeah. I guess that's like a, a fairly well-known thing to go picking oh, on new construction sites okay. that's, oh, why I didn't know that's that. why they're all, that's why they're Making a lot notes. i mean they're, they're, they're oh, secured now security. they're secured now for other reasons because people are stealing fucking lumber because that shit cost more than yay oh, a yeah. couple years uh-huh. ago crazy yeah not that i know the cost of that shit but i assume it's pretty fucking everything's expensive, expensive <laughs> right now everything's yeah exactly expensive. I, I don't think yeah, that crazy. shit went down when my yeah. cheese it's are like six dollars <laughs> a box <laughs> whatever it is it's more <laughs> I remember when we all worked together. Red Hook uh, uh, limes, 
went up, like skyrocketed. The cartel got into lines. The cartel got into lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember Matt Slesky told me that because we were having to talk about like cost of goods, like work shit, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, Matt always had his numbers and obviously, you know, good shout out to Matt. That motherfucker always had his fucking, his labor, his cost of goods, his inventory. The dude always had his shit on point. Never had to have like a disparaging conversation with Matt Slesky. But we were talking about one day, it's like food cost was high. And I'm like, what's going on, man? And he, he tells me about the fucking lime thing. And he's like, yeah, I did some research. The cartels and lime. Got the, the, the lime. cartels I'm like, like, lime and I'm like, out. wait. Fucking muscling <laughs> out lime. Muscling out fucking lime farmers in Mexico. Like if I didn't know Matt so well, I would be like, and even at the point, at that point when he told me that, I'm like, what are you fucking with me? Fuck like what the hell? Cartel shit? Where did you get this from? And he like pulled up the website, showed me all the fucking articles and shit. I'm like, God, God damn, man. Cartel's like, it'll be way easier to just fucking... <laughs> muscle out this farmer and just sell yeah, limes yeah, exactly. for fucking six months in a $200 a case or whatever exactly. the fuck they were. Lie. Yeah, they, were, they averaged out to like $4 a lime. Yeah, yeah. it was insane. It was, it was literally yeah. like 50 cents a wedge. Like yeah. even in places now, <laughs> people still don't really... Um, there's a couple places like limes aren't fucking... I mean, still nothing's cheap, but it's like yeah. charging for a lime wedge is like not unheard of even yeah. now still because of that. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know the thing. Once Shit you once real. you have it, you fucking never take it away. Like fucking check bag fees after fucking nine eleven. Oh yeah, the fucking nine oh, eleven. Yeah, yeah. No. check bag fees. Yeah. Well, shit. Even at gotta the... help out those airlines. <laughs> yeah, gotta right. fucking pay for your bags. Well, I was just gonna wear f- multiple layers. <laughs> and then have a toiletries just strategically placed on one of the coats. Yeah. But now you made those sizes smaller, so it's gonna be even harder for me to. <laughs> That Southwest <laughs> shit, by the way, was crazy. What? The, so- the Southwest the breakdown. Oh, yeah. I've had like 12,000 bags were in the city, but the oh. no no people were there. I'm like, if they if anyone ever gets their bag back, just thank your lucky stars you that even ever get it bothered. back. And so, it will, if, if you do get it back, it's going to be at least 60 days. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever lost I've your shit? I've never lost a bag. Have you ever lost your shit on a plane? Check. Um, Mon recently got her stuff misplaced, but we got it back. I can't think if I have. I've I think I have. But I've never lost lost. No, like, I they've didn't always, lost. always been able to yeah. find it and like delivered it or something like that. Yeah, I I, I never lost <coughs> lost, but ten years ago I was going to a thing in Europe and I I had a layover in Amsterdam and shit. Mm. Twenty one hour layover in Amsterdam Ooh. and my bag didn't show up and it like had my suit and shit, like everything. Oh, I was going to damn. a fucking wedding. Like, where are you staying in Scotland? I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Scotland, Scotland. Amsterdam, <laughs> Fuck, somewhere. I don't know. This is, no, but I got like, I got my shit at like midnight, and I think I flew out at 6 a.m. Damn. Uh, but like, I was a, str- I was like, you know, just, I mean, obviously did what I do in Amsterdam. Yeah. yeah. But like, I, I it was like a stress McNugget. People at the bar are like, are you okay? I'm like, uh, nah, man. No, nah. I'm like, not, all my not shit, well. all my anything. shit is somewhere in Skiffle or fucking <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> oh, am I not well? No, nah, I'm fucking. I'm all fucked up, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> but I feel like that Southwest Luggage. breakdown oh, was such God. a good uh, <sighs> representation of where we are. As Didn't a you fly out? You flew out. Flew well, out. yeah, I wasn't supposed to, but my grandmother. Uh, yeah, my grandmother ended up getting sick over the holidays, and so we had to make a flight out. My oh, sister shit. got a flight out on fucking Christmas Eve, which I don't know how the fuck she managed that. Some divine universe. She got an Uber to the airport, which there Your were no sister Ubers was, out. Your sister lives here? Here, yeah. How the fuck she get out? Don't, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, so she had some some kind of divine miracle and was able to get on New Year's Eve, but or I mean uh, Christmas Eve, but I, I feel it a couple days later. Um, but the... The uh the airport when I showed up it was fine uh it was a couple of days after the debacle. oh I saw the shit on the news these people were like yeah I've been on hold for eight hours yes. I've been here for fucking twenty hours like the, the lines were going out into the parking yes. lot so like you were just cold like yeah. that people were just in fucking thirty degree parking garage but the reason why it broke down is because of the system that Southwest had kept over the years and never updated and so they were using something that wasn't working they were like using and, fucking windows and they fucking just kept Vista. using this thing that wasn't working and every employee was like I kept telling them all it's gonna take is one uh, massive uh, natural disaster some kind of snowstorm rainstorm whatever and it was gonna be a shutdown uh, and he's like I've worked here for 25 example. years and it was like it took this complete shit show for them to be able to fix it and i feel like that's exactly what's happening at a macro level at our country Ah. it's like we are identifying the problems of shit we have ignored and we are facing the repercussions of that but best believe after this southwest is going to have a pristine fucking system because they can't afford not to yeah so yeah wow i think that is a 
representation of the the bumpiness. Yeah, we had That's all of crazy. our fucking. I don't even fly southwest. Flights. I don't fly southwest. I've never had a problem southwest ever. I've done it. I'm, I'm trying to think if I. I, I think was I've expecting had to shit like that all day. Well, like you know, I, I you know, not to be elitist, but here we go. Like now, <laughs> now, now, I like Alaska I, only. I I'm try to, me, try to, well, they're, they're the most reliable, we were a hub, so that's yeah. part of it, yeah. but it's like, I think I had to fly southwest to go to fucking New Orleans once or something like yeah. that, and like three out of four, no, that was, that was the southwest, but I remember three out of four flights were fucked. I should really remember which <laughs> yeah. airline that was, because that's important when three out of four are fucked. I've yeah, really only flown south, because growing up in Tucson, Phoenix, I thought was a hub, and apparently southwest has no hubs, which is why they had a breakdown, um, but I only flew southwest. And I never had a problem. And so when I heard shit was going down, I was like, it's going to be American Airlines or Delta. Like, those are the ones that are going to fucking break down. I was never expecting Southwest. Mm. Yeah, I flew Southwest a lot coming out of Houston. Yeah, because Southwest. Well, I guess yeah. now I guess now is the one that the fucking ghetto one is uh, Spirit. Spirit, yeah. Dude, I've close? Never, I thought they I have like no closed. idea. I have no idea, but like that's like the no joke in the airline business. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, you should probably go fly Spirit then. No, that <laughs> was terrible. I, I I'm, them you, once. I, I've never. I mean, see, I've been on discount airlines in Europe where it's like fucking fifty bucks but and they don't, don't you have do to shit pay for literally everything. So oh my the god, flight is like twenty five dollars, <clears> but you have to pay for everything. everything and your own body. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so we, my my issue with them was, uh, so we get the you know you only one carry on, you know and purse is kind of a carry on so we get that but my so we, we it was monica and my two daughters and i can't remember where we were going but the uh the person checking us in to get on the plane uh not only there's there's a really nice way that this can be all of been handled <laughs> but my daughter youngest daughter was 10 at the time uh harper maybe 11 and uh and she was carrying her blanket and the woman stopped her and said, you're not allowed to carry that on. You already have a carry on. You need to put that somewhere or leave it here. And I looked at that woman and I'm like, you were fucking check your tone. All right. This is a child you're talking to. That's her blanket. Would you like me to hold it? Would you like me to fucking find you another job? I'm also, like, this can is I just bullshit. tie it around my neck and now it's part of my outfit? Right. Like, I'm like, I'm bad. wearing a cape, right? And it's, uh, but I could see the fear in this woman's eyes. Like yes. she just had no job security. Right. She had no, like she was really like just trying to uphold Ugh. anything that she could. The power and, of struggle. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. You, we need to you, go, also, go deal with what you got to deal with. you don't tell the 10 year old that. You yeah, tell the Talk to me about that. that. Like, hey, the 10 year old's not going to understand. Right. Exactly. You made that kid Probably cry, is man. a safety hazard if we're going to get down fucking <laughs> yeah, aisles and fires and all yeah, that. Right. But, you know, not to, not to be that dickhead, but here we go. Everyone, everyone. Everyone does their role. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's like I can make it into a skirt. All right. Great. Right. Done. Now. <laughs> That's shawl. What does with everything. Yeah. A shawl. Yeah. Pashmina. Oh man. Like, like fucking uh, Robin Williams on Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, it was a Shonda. <laughs> it was a Shonda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a great movie. I fucking oh, love that one. What about music this year? What kind of music did you guys get into? Ah, uh, geez. Anything new? Probably not. Yeah. My favorite new album. Oh, I, I think there's one. two. I got a good new album. You say that Black Thought. <laughs> yes, yeah. Cheat Codes. God, that was dope fucking album. Holy fuck, beats are great. Black Thought's on point with his rhymes. Like it's just a great album. Um, and I've heard a lot more really oh, so good new music this year. Me? Oh, 10 minutes long. It, without a breath. No. No pauses. Fuck. No nothing. And just knowledge. Just dropping just knowledge. It the, wasn't like bitches and hoes and like this, that, and the other. It's like. We are like Henrietta Lacks. Right. I was like, oh my God. It was so yeah. good. I'll have to send that to you. Black Thought put down like, and it was like five years ago, but a 10 minute freestyle on a radio show and they just like dropped the beat and he just went Let for 10 go. minutes straight and it wasn't like it, when i say there were no pauses i'm not exaggerating yeah. it was a complete fluid like he had memorized it yeah. and there was no i mean there was it was the most insane thing i've ever seen yeah, yeah. very very fucking kind of like bun b's verse on what the fuck is that UG? Oh, murder <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ug oh uh, you know what there's a there's a song i remembered that is uh uh my one of my probably favorite bun b verses one of my favorite outcast songs it's outcast mm. in ugk and it's called tough guy and it was from i think the shaft soundtrack uh, the fucking Samuel Sam L. Jackson. Sam 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 Sam. I, I'm next time I'm at Goodwill, I'm gonna get that on CD for a buck. Uh, but <laughs> yes. so, but that that song is not on Spotify. I don't know if it's on Apple, 
but uh, but it's on YouTube. I'll yeah, get you it. gotta check. But that out. his, I mean, all all four verses are dope as shit. I mean, they're all on point. Yeah. But Bun B, like, just he's I had just nobody can do it like him. He's just so fucking good, so good. Like his cadence is just he changes his shit up. Actually, I have to say. Uh, my second favorite album, I'm pretty sure it came out this year, but I've r- fucking listened to the hell out of it, was uh, Run the Jewels 4. Mm-hmm. That, that might have came out been, two years ago. I think ago. that was two yeah. years ago. Cause, no, maybe three years ago. Cause I wanted, it might have been. Yeah. yeah, because actually, yeah, what else happened in 2022? Robin found out he's not seeing fucking Rage Against the Machine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But Run the Jewels was opening for that, yeah. and I had those tickets for three years. That's so right, that album, yeah, that album's, might be three years that old. album's older than John Stamos, bro. That's... It's, John, yeah. okay. He's yeah. Infinity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that Netflix documentary, Infinity. Oh, God, Woo! Trip to Infinity. Holy shit. What the fuck? Is a that? lot of good documentaries. It's a great this one. Year. It's like an hour and a half. I feel like we've talked about it before. I, I, I've i probably watched in 2022. I'm sure they could tell me the metrics, probably like eight movies on yeah. Netflix. <laughs> not, not getting my dollars on that one. No, for sure. Add a couple of zeros to that, and that's how many movies I watched this yeah, year. Yeah, I watched a show um, on Netflix. I watched a shit ton of documentaries this year. No, music wise, I found two bands unexpectedly one of them was like through tiktok and the other one was just like like a random shuffle when i had my title up and and it just came through and i'm in love with sammy ray and the friends and lawrence the band i don't think i've heard either they both are very like sammy ray and the friends is almost like got this jazz big band quality to it and the singer is just ethereal and their songs are so upbeat and positive and same with Lawrence and the band or Lawrence the band and um yeah I just fucking I fucking love those oh, yeah. both of those okay finds this year I'll check them out yeah I love them. I'm always looking for new music and we talked about this before but you know I think there was a study done uh, or somebody put out an article that talked about how most of us develop our um, music habits, you know, just like our, you know, the way we deal with our emotions when, yeah, we're, when we're younger. Hold on to them for the rest of our lives. <laughs> exactly. You know, and so <laughs> like, as we get older, there's not a lot of like, we, not a lot of us make a lot of space for new music yeah. unless we need to. Uh, yoga for me has left that door open for me because I want to make sure I'm staying current and blah, blah, blah. I like, I just love music. Yeah. Uh, no, you can't just play Rob bass every time you're at the fucking... <laughs> yeah. No, no. Pete Rock and Seal Smooth. <laughs> 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 can you do a sound bath to um, fucking Rob bass? Actually... I'm Rob uh, bass and I came to get down. There's a... I've, I've actually got a couple of reels out there uh, that are hip-hop sound Yeah, doing. your Wu-Tang one. I remember yeah, that one. There's yeah. a Wu-Tang one. I did... Uh, actually, I did... Uh, um, uh, they reminisce over you, Troy, yes. uh, from Pre Rock and Seal Smooth. I found that one. So yeah, every once in a while, like when I'm when I'm playing the Bulls, I'll catch a beat, I'll catch a fucking rhythm of some sort, and I'm like, oh, oh, yes. like Cats in the Cradle. I caught Cats in the Cradle a yes. couple times, and I was like playing that during a sound bath, and like, oh, that's too obvious, you know. Just do, do a show. Do, do, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I fucking, I fucking <laughs> dig me some Harry Chapin. Those records are still pretty cheap. I was at a record store. I'm like, oh, they got a decent amount of used Harry Chapin. Yeah, I was gonna always find Harry Chapin. You can always get Chapin. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, do you have anything you're focusing on this next year? Oh, I don't shit. know if resolution's the right idea, right word. Mm. I don't know. Some people like to have just a word to focus on this new year. Um. Ex- uh, expecting the best rather than the worst. Hmm, that's great. I think like vi- uh, uh, having a more positive outlook, positive, yeah. optimistic outlook. And like, I have this mantra because of uh, Abraham Hicks, like, who I listen to all the time mm-hmm. where um, it's just like, everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. Stuff just works out for me. And even when it's not working out for me, just like having that mental, capacity to just be like even when it's not working out it'll work out yeah i mean i think there's a a reminder that there's a reminder that shit's so temporary you know yeah like it really for the most part is yeah temporary well there's uh one i don't don't know if i've shared this story on the the podcast but one of my favorite uh buddhist allegories is um uh so you have a uh uh this farmer farmer's family right and farmer and his wife and and their son son's like 16 years old Prize of the family, going to take over the farm, do all the things. And this is long, long time ago. And so uh, one day the son is out there tilling the field and he's behind the horse and the horse is plowing and the kid slips and the horse runs him over with the plow, breaks his leg. <clears throat> the whole village shows up and they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. They're talking to the dad and it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. That's horrible. And the, the farmer's like, ah, oh, we'll see. And the 
village is like, we'll see what the fuck's that, right? And so they all disperse. And then the next day, the army shows up and they're like, hey, we're going to go to war and we need all able bodied men. So everybody coming, but broken leg kid, you can't come because you got a broken leg. And all the villagers are like, oh my God, that's great. That's such good luck. You mm-hmm. don't have to go. And the farmer's are like, oh, we'll see. Because you never, like you said, we never yeah. know. We don't know how the plan's playing out. We don't know what this chapter or this line or this paragraph in our life, how it's going to end up like 500 pages later. Yeah. And you for know. how like bumpy it's been the last three years, it's like if I've already s- not survived, but I've already like been through stuff and came out the other side fine. Yeah. I mean like, you know, shitty things happen and bills and, you know, yeah. car breakdown and unemployment and all that shit. Like, but like I'm still here. I'm still doing okay. And so if during the process of it happening, if I can just be a li- like, cause I just get into these anxiety spirals. It, so working on like when I'm in the middle of it, just knowing that like, it, yeah, it might be bumpy. It might be uncomfortable, but that's okay. Right. Might not get a lot of sleep. That's okay. Like, and just talking myself off the ledge a little better when I'm in the middle of it. Cause it's going to happen either way. Yeah. So, and it's already happening. So I might as well not completely drain myself of, all of my energy while it's happening. Yep. Find something good to focus on. Uh, somebody told me the other day, um, you you right now have a hundred percent success rate with making it through shitty days. Y- yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's a really. Yeah. Thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Because as hard as it can be, it's like, well, I've made it this far, yeah. and I keep making it through these shitty days. Yeah. So I figured out somehow. Forty two, man. The quad deuce is what they <laughs> call that. Yeah, quad deuce. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Drop the quad deuce. Oh shit, God! I really wish I could figure out what this actress name was, but I did another like Johnny Travi moment, and I'm oh, like, yeah. hey, like that's what people call her, and it's like, no, 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 no. no. You don't remember who that was? It might have been Jay Foss. <laughs> Jody Foster. I don't, Jay Foss. Uh, I'm not sure. I did, so that one, I don't know if it would work for me because I worked with a guy named Jonah Fosso. It was oh, also sh- Jay Foss. Jay Foss. Yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah. I think of him now when I think of Jay, Jay Foss. So that doesn't work. You don't for think me. of Nell. Not like Nell. <laughs> <laughs> have you watched it? Yeah. That is both of your no, goals. But we need to watch fucking okay, Nell. No, but actually, I've been talking about Nell for two fucking years. Take the win. Okay, so I brought it up to Monica, and she's like, "I'm like, Kenzie gave us his homework. We got to watch this movie now." And she's like, "Whatever." And I she gave her didn't the know what it was seven. until like. Uh, okay, and then I showed her like, oh, "Well, I've sent trailer. her this thing," and uh, I should because I sent you that the uh-huh. gift, and she's like. Wait a minute. Did she say Tay in the Wind? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, I've seen that. Yes. I've seen that. Yes. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> she got excited. <laughs> See, so you got two people telling you it's all right. I it's a good watch movie. Nell. Who's yeah, the, the male day, lead? Was it Bill Pullman? Yes. No, no. Liam, Liam Neeson and uh, Natasha <laughs> Richardson. <laughs> they met on that movie. Fucking Nell. Yes. <laughs> Gotta watch Nell. Uh, Don't cry, this chick pay. Don't cry. All right. I'll just put that back yeah, on my that's list. Yours. Fuck. No. Jesus, no. <laughs> well, so so I told you, uh, <laughs> di- 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 we may, I may have mentioned this on the last podcast, so uh, we both caught the flu, me and the lady, and she's like, hey, can I buy a movie on Amazon? And I was at work, and she was a couple days behind me on the illness. I get home, I'm like, I wonder what she's watching. She was watching Stand By Me, and I'm just like, fuck, I can't watch fucking Stand By Me. I feel like shit. I can't watch this fucking coming of age. That's a great fucking movie, but I'm just like, oh. Did you come in at the beginning or at the end? Like, pretty much right at the start. I missed, like, the first five minutes, so I'm like, oh, I'm just watching Stand By Me. Oh, my God. (laughs) Fuck, it's so good, though, but it's just like, man, I don't want to watch fucking 12-year-olds cry. Wrecking me. Yeah. Fucking Stand By Me. (laughs) Oh uh, man. Well, I know we gotta wrap up because yeah. you guys got places to be. But yeah. um hey, here's in this this current year. Twenty twenty three, dude. Well, the, 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 let's do it. The, I don't have anything. It's <laughs> 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 a good button to add on. Twenty twenty three, I got nothing. Yeah, All no, right, no, no, no. see you later. Peace.